Hello and welcome to this week's reading vlog. Apologies if Bluebell's purring is too loud, <laughs> but I'm not going to kick her off. Uh, I will tell you what I've already started reading in the month of December. So this month I read Shark Heart, which I gave four stars. So I was looking at the Goodreads nominees for the, the best books of the year. And whilst I had read pretty much everything in like the fantasy and romantic categories, there were obviously some in the other categories I hadn't heard of. And this one caught my attention. I saw it. I think it was, it was either in the debut or in the lip fic category, but I decided to give it a go and I did give it four stars. I thought it was really good. The big first half of it was amazing. And the second half I started to lose interest. So in this book, you have a married couple, and the husband starts to turn into a great white shark. So in this world, some people have these animal illnesses where they turn, they start to turn into animals and there's nothing that can be done about it. They eventually fully transform into these animals. So this is sort of the husband and wife's love story, which was, oh, I cried. So tears were shed. It's, it's got a very interesting writing style. It's a bit unusual. The wife's name is Ren and she's very quiet and a bit odd. And it was interesting to see them navigate this together and how they are after it. Um, but the second half of the book sort of goes into Ren's mother's story. And I cared less about that. I was more there for the romance between Ren and her husband. So it was still nice. It was still very sweet, very different uh, book that I haven't, <laughs> blue bell, I haven't read before. So I, yeah, I did enjoy my time with it. Hey, Sylvie, where are you? Wait, wait, oh, there you are. The next book that I picked up was The Benevolent Society of Ill-Mannered Ladies and I read 139 pages of this and then decided to DNF it. So it's a Regency kind of historical book and you've got two 40-something-year-old ladies who have not married and who are sort of and who other women go to for help. In one case, for instance, they're asked to rescue a woman who's being held hostage by her husband and who fears for her life because she's been unable to give him an heir and she thinks that he's going to murder her. So they set about to go and rescue her. Um, it just, it wasn't for me. I didn't find it funny and I didn't find it entertaining. I was quite bored and it just didn't, it didn't have anything special. So I decided to do an effort. I, I, I did push a lot because I was hoping it would, I would get invested, it would pick up, or there'd be a romance I was interested in, but that didn't happen, so I put it down. The book that I am currently reading is called Exalted, and this caught my eye because of the cover. I think Goodreads recommended it to me, and I'm like, what is that? That's very interesting to me. So in this book, you, you've got two perspectives. You've got a woman named Dawn, who's like a 48-year-old lesbian, and she's so toxic. She needs so much therapy, and she's just broken up with a girlfriend, and she's just yeah, she's just off the rails. Oh, and Dawn's a Leo. Like, astrology signs play a big part in this book. And then you've got Emily, who is an astrologer. That's her job. She has an Instagram page called Exalted, where she posts, like, memes and things. And she's a Scorpio. And I'm very much enjoying her chapters. Like, I love her chapters. Dawn's, I don't really don't like reading so far. And she ends up getting a request to someone's chart. And when she looks at this man's chart, it's Exalted meaning like all of the planets are in the perfect signs, like everything is exalted. And so she becomes fascinated and wants to find him and meet him. So she becomes obsessed with finding this person who has this exalted birth chart. I don't know yet how Dawn and Emily are going to cross paths, if it's maybe the dude is the common link, don't know yet. But the way that it's written and the way that the chapters are structured, it's very easily readable. Like it's very bingeable. I had to force myself to put it down. Um, that being said, like I said, I, I am struggling reading through Dawn's chapters because she's just so unlikable and so rude and toxic. But Emily's, I'm just eating up like crackers, you know, I can't get enough. So we'll see how that goes. But so far, I'm really having a fun time with it. Today I'm going Christmas shopping, trying to get it all finished, all done, and then start on the Christmas decorations and putting up the tree and all that jazz. And like I said, I'm looking forward to getting out and about again now that I am definitely better. Still got the chronic fatigue and the brain fog, but I'm used to chronic fatigue and brain fog. That's just pretty much my life now anyway. But um, I'll touch base with you guys once I've read another book. And the winner for my book giveaway was Emily Ailman.
with some numbers. I've forgotten the numbers, but I've, I apologize for forgetting to actually do this in the proper video. But congratulations, you won. I'll email you and I will ship off your goodies. Hello guys, so let me tell you about the other books that I have read this week. So I read The Unmaking of June Farrow and I have given this a 3.25 stars. So in this book it's taking a look at this woman who belongs to this line of women where they all succumb to this mental illness. At some point they start seeing a red door, they start hearing voices and she's decided that she's not going to have any daughters. Every woman in this in this line has a daughter. And for some reason, none of the fathers or the men are in the lives of these women anymore. So it's looking at her. Her grandmother has just passed away. She's not coping very well. She starts seeing the doors. She starts hearing voices. So this is a time travel book. And my issue with this one is that it just... I had trouble switching the logic part of my brain off and just sort of accepting the going backwards in time thing having not really affected the present. It was just, I don't know, it was okay. There is a love story in it, but it didn't hit for me. I have loved time travel jumping books before, like The Time Traveler's Wife. I absolutely love that book. This one just didn't do anything for me. It's very slow paced and even though there are things like murder involved it just wasn't that captivating and I think for me this author's style of writing just isn't for me. I've read some of their other books and it was the same thing they're all around three something stars so I think the writing with the time traveling sort of illogical situation that was happening just made it a a very mid book for me. It still gave it 3.25. Like it's fine. It's I would recommend it to other people. It just wasn't for me. Then I read Exalted and I've given this four and a half stars. I really like this book. <laughs> so I'll start. The cover is gorgeous. The cover just really caught my attention and I love it. In this book it's like an episode of Maury but with astrology. It is batshit crazy. It is very dramatic. It's very soap opery. And I was in the mood for it. I was in the mood for the over-the-top drama. So you have two characters, like I said previously, you have Dawn, who is a 48-year-old lesbian, single mom, very toxic, has major anger issues, like don't even get me started, and is a Leo. And then you had Emily, who runs an astrology Instagram, like she makes memes and things. She's a Scorpio. She's kind of discontented with her life. She had all these dreams of being a star and just things haven't worked out for her. And then one day she gets a request to do a chart for a man named Bo and his chart is exalted. All of his planets and houses are in the right place. They're exalted and their paths cross. I remember previously I said I wasn't sure how their paths crossed. Well, we found out. And this is wild. This is wild. A lot of stuff goes down that is just so <laughs> extra, but I loved it. I loved reading Emily's chapters. I didn't really like reading Dawn's. She's still a very unlikable person. Her toxicity and abusive nature is just too hard to swallow. I didn't feel sorry for her. I didn't, wasn't rooting for her. And I, um, I can't talk about the ending, but yeah, Dawn's just, I would have much preferred to have Bo's uh, point of view as a secondary character in this. I would really like to see what was going in their head and everything else, but unfortunately we got Dawn. So don't worry about Dawn, but Emily, I loved it. I loved reading it. It was very easy to read. It had a very readable quality to it. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Melissa Broder, just a little bit, but I thoroughly 
enjoyed it. It was entertaining. It was just like, wow, what a roller coaster ride. I never really watched um, the Maury episodes. It's just too much with the chair throwing things, but this book is that kind of just in a literary format. It's not, I would say it's not super predictable. <laughs> it's wild and wacky. Obviously I love all of the astrology components in there. I am an astrology bitch, but I just thought it was great. And I, yeah, I had a good time. So that was exalted. And the last book that I read for this vlog is Neil Gaiman's What You Need To Be Warm. I'll put some pictures up above. So this was, um, Neil went on Instagram and asked people to give him their stories of memories of when they were warm and he then turned those memories into poems and then got a bunch of different artists to illustrate those poems in the colors black white and orange so in this book you see refugees fleeing their destroyed homes and obviously it is a reminder of the current world that we live in where wars are being waged for greed for power, for land. And as long as there are those who profit from war, there will never be peace. And these wars are paid for with the blood of innocent children. They destroy homes, they destroy families, and they take lives. And it makes you feel really sickened and enraged and powerless and hopeless because besides donating to charities to help those whose lives have been irrevocably broken and ruined, the bombs are going to continue to fall. Like It's not stopping the people that are perpetrating these crimes. And I know it's probably a pessimistic point of view, but I feel like the organizations and the people and the governments that are participating in these war crimes, I don't feel like they will ever be brought to justice. I don't feel like they're ever going to agree to ceasefires because like I said, I feel like war, war benefits the people that are in control and the innocent will suffer. They're just collateral damage, I guess, to these people. So I, um, yeah, this got me very upset and crying and angry and heartbroken because what can I do? Like we should be at a point in human civilization that wars are no longer the answer for anything but like i said unfortunately with human nature there comes that desire for absolute power for money for land for personal gain and as long as that is always something that you know people in power want whatever they want is going to happen and if that's a war then so be it so um it just yeah, it just makes my heart go out to anybody who is currently in this situ in that reality and they are not safe and they are not warm. And yeah, so I can't talk about it much more because I'm gonna start crying. But this was, um, I would probably say this is not a book for young kids. Like this is not, I know that this is a picture book. I probably say it's not so much for young kids as, as it is for adults. I feel like it's more of a picture book for adults because of the content matter. Um, I don't think young children would understand that much, obviously, unless you talk to them through it. But um, yeah, I, I just, I bought this. This is my own copy. Um, because I wanted to support UNHCR and Neil Gaiman. Um, but yeah, this was, uh, I was not, yeah, not expecting to get punched in the gut. I didn't know what I was getting myself in for, but, but that was this book. Apologies for ending it on such a sort of a sorrow-filled note, but I guess that is what is going on in the world right now. And sometimes you have to sort of confront reality and say something. But um, yeah, that was everything I read this week. Until next time, stay wild, Sarah Child.